Hello and welcome to Quest Recapped. Today, we will be going through the 2020 animated film, Earwig and the Witch. The movie begins with a red-haired witch riding a motorcycle while holding her baby, singing to her as she rides. She is seen being pursued by other witches in a car with a sharp-toothed mouth. Undeterred, the red-haired witch cleverly plucks a strand of her own hair and tosses it back at the car, instantly transforming it into a wriggling heap of worms. After skillfully evading her pursuers, the woman makes a quick stop at an orphanage, where she carefully sets the infant girl in front of the orphanage door and leaves. It doesn't take long for the matron of the orphanage and her assistant to find the little baby on their doorstep. Alongside the baby, they also stumble upon a letter left behind by the mother, which reveals the baby's name is Earwig. Additionally, the letter mentions that the mother is being chased by a coven of witches and will return to reclaim the baby once she evades them. Afterward, these two caretakers bring the infant to the orphanage, and not fond of the name Earwig, the matron decides to present the baby to the rest of the children as Erica Wig. As years go by, Earwig grows into a beautiful and lively girl. She feels completely at ease in the orphanage, where everyone caters to her every whim. She enjoys her life there alongside her dear friend, Custard, and has no desire to be adopted. On one particular night, Earwig and her friends from the orphanage pretend to be ghosts and venture into a cemetery near the orphanage. Soon after, a neighbor passes by the cemetery with his dog and their mischief frightens the old man, who quickly flees the scene. The following day, the matron rushes to receive a report from their neighbor. Curious about the children's activities, she inquires with her assistant if the children sneaked out to the cemetery while dressed as ghosts, but the assistant is unaware of the incident. Witnessing the matron's confusion, Earwig approaches her and reveals the truth about the previous night's events. She proceeds to explain that she was the one who pretended to be the ghost in the graveyard. The motive behind it was that one of the children was scheduled for adoption that day, and they organized a farewell party. Upon learning this, the matron refrains from scolding her and instead embraces her. Later that day, a peculiar couple named Bella Yaga and Mandrick visit the orphanage with the intention of adopting a child. The matron then instructs Earwig and her friends to line up, and the pair enter the room. Despite putting on a menacing expression, Earwig is chosen for adoption. Reluctantly, Earwig enters her room to pack her belongings. While sorting through her possessions, she discovers an envelope containing a tape labeled Earwig, which she decides to bring along with her. With this, she proceeds to trail the two individuals as they make their way to a house with a distinctive style. Once she arrives at her new home, Bella Yaga then reveals herself to be a witch and confesses that she adopted Earwig solely to have an extra pair of hands for household chores. She also warns her against disturbing Mandrick or provoking his anger and proceeds to outline other rules that Earwig must abide by while living there. Then, in a mutual agreement, Earwig volunteers to become Bella's assistant in exchange for learning magic. Additionally, the little girl starts observing potential escape routes and envisions the ease with which she can escape whenever she desires. However, she soon discovers that all the doors mysteriously lock themselves. Following Bella to a room dedicated to potion making, Earwig is introduced to a wide array of peculiar objects and materials. Her responsibilities include gathering spell ingredients and tidying up the workspace. Furthermore, her initial assignment involves using a pestle to grind rat bones into a smooth powder. In the meantime, Bella consults a book to concoct a magical potion, and Thomas, a black cat, assists her in the process within the room. Earwig then persistently questions Bella about these potions, but she remains tight-lipped and refuses to provide any information or instruction. Suddenly, the phone rings, and Bella steps away to answer it. Taking advantage of Bella's absence, Earwig briefly reads the magic potion book resting on the table but discovers nothing of interest. Once Earwig completes her work in making the magic potion, she proceeds to the dining room to join Mandrick and Bella for a meal. During the night, while on her way to her room, Earwig unintentionally catches a glimpse of Bella moving from one room to another. Driven by curiosity, Earwig decides to follow Bella into the room, but to her surprise, the door inexplicably vanishes. Bewildered, she attempts to locate the door in other rooms but finds herself in a room filled with a vast collection of books instead. As she explores, Earwig discovers a novel authored by Mandrick. Suddenly, the books start falling onto her head, so she swiftly retreats from the room. Despite leaving the room, her curiosity remains unsatisfied 
prompting her to venture into other areas of the house. She opens another door, leading her into a vast yet dimly lit room. Inside, she spots the yellow car, a radio, and a stack of tapes labeled Earwig in the car. Seizing the opportunity, Earwig takes a cassette and the radio player before returning to her room. As she leaves the room, she realizes that the front door of the house is nowhere to be found. She then tries to leave the house, but quickly discovers that all other exits have been magically sealed by Mandrick. The next morning, Bella wakes Earwig up, and they prepare breakfast together. Bella then mentions that the cooking duties will eventually be entrusted to Earwig, emphasizing the importance of good behavior. She also warns the little girl that disobedience would result in receiving a dreadful blue curly worm. Later that day, Bella assigns Earwig the task of gathering materials from the backyard. Then, while Bella is occupied with hanging clothes to dry, she seizes an opportunity to escape. As Earwig gazes at the door leading to the yard, Bella cautions her about the presence of Mandrick's demons who guard the exit. Determined to gain control, Earwig sets her sights on obtaining Mandrick's heart. On a particular occasion, she accidentally witnesses Mandrick issuing commands to his demon, marveling at the man's abilities and aspiring to someday command a demon of her own. Afterward, Earwig returns to her room and plays the cassette she discovered in the car. Soon, Thomas, the black cat, pays a visit to her room, and she makes a startling discovery. The cat can talk. The following day, Earwig assists Bella once again in concocting a magic potion. Growing frustrated, she then confronts Bella, asserting that she is not her slave and reminding her of their agreement for Earwig to be taught magic in exchange for her assistance. In response, Bella threatens her with the prospect of receiving the worm if she fails to fulfill her duties. Reluctantly, Earwig finds herself compelled to carry out the witch's tasks. As the evening approaches, she channels her anger into drawing a depiction of Mandrick on paper while listening to her own music. Suddenly, a pair of eyes materializes on the wall which startles her astonished. Earwig questions about the eyes to Thomas, who reveals that they stem from Mandrick's room hidden behind the wall. Intrigued, she inquires about how Mandrick's room ended up concealed behind the wall when her room was beside the bathroom. Consequently, Thomas explains that this is a result of Mandrick's magical powers. He then advises Earwig to stop her drawings and hide the picture she created of Mandrick beneath her pillow to avoid upsetting him. Curious about spells, Earwig inquires if Thomas possesses knowledge of the spell she desires. Thomas claims to be acquainted with a number of spells and suggests that any spell may be found in the magic potion book. Eagerly, they sneak into the workroom where Bella typically concocts her magic potions. Together, Earwig and Thomas search for the potion that grants them resistance to magic, rendering them immune to Bella's punishments. Upon discovering the spell, Earwig realizes that the potion requires numerous ingredients, possibly even in the hundreds. However, with Thomas's assistance, they manage to successfully concoct the potion that night and lather it onto themselves. The following day, Mandrick offers Earwig her favorite dish for lunch, which greatly touches her emotionally. Meanwhile, Despite the rainy weather, Bella commands her to gather ingredients from the backyard. Earwig complies patiently, making multiple trips back and forth. However, she voices her discontent with Bella's unfair treatment and demands to be taught magic. In response, Bella firmly refuses, stating that Earwig was brought here solely to work, not to learn magic. Disheartened by this response, Earwig decides to play a prank on Bella. She consults Thomas, inquiring whether a magic spell exists that can grant someone an extra hand. Eventually, Bella has to leave to deliver her potion order and she instructs Earwig to tidy up the magic potion room before leaving. Earwig then seizes this opportunity to craft a doll, but realizes that she needs Bella's hair to complete the process. As Earwig busily works on the puppet, Mandrick enters and presents her with a cake. Once Bella returns home, Earwig hastily rushes to her room to hide the witch doll. While cleaning the potion room, Earwig ponders how she can obtain Bella's hair. However, she is unaware of where Bella Yaga's bedroom is located as the bedroom door is completely missing. Afterward, she contemplates the possibility that if Mandrick's room is adjacent to hers, then Bella's room might be there as well. With a screwdriver in hand, she creates a hole in the wall, allowing her to catch a glimpse of Mandrick's room through the opening. Peering through, she observes Mandrick surrounded by his mischievous demons, playing the piano. 
Afterward, Yerwig stumbles upon Bella's hat hanging nearby. She then examines the hat, and to her delight, she discovers some strands left behind. Following this, Yerwig retrieves the hair and binds it to the puppet she had crafted. Astonishingly, the spell successfully manifests, causing a pair of hands to grow on Bella. Amused by the outcome, Irwig bursts into laughter, proclaiming that she has granted Bella an extra hand. Enraged by the mischief, the witch locks Irwig in her room and sends a heap of blue worms as a punishment. Thomas, upon seeing the worms, becomes frightened and hides under a blanket. Remarkably, nothing happens to either of them as the worm merely gathers on the floor without causing harm. Later, Irwig grabs the worm and places it in the hole, hoping it will make its way into the bathroom. However, to her surprise, the worm ends up infiltrating Mandrick's room instead. Suddenly, an enraged Mandrick appears, his entire body spewing flames. Mistakenly believing that the blue worms were sent from Bella, he confronts her, leaving her terrified. Then, Bella quickly heads to Irwig's room, intending to accuse her but Mandrick scolds both of them upon witnessing their interaction. In the midst of this chaos, the familiar sound of Irwig's frequently played music fills the air. The music emanates from a band that Mandrick and Bella used to be part of. This interruption prompts Mandrick to fall silent, momentarily reminiscing about his past. Irwig then manages to push Bella aside and infiltrates Mandrick's room. There, she discovers a poster featuring Mandrick, Bella, and one other member of the band named Irwig. Shortly after, Mandrick enters the room in his human form, exuding a calm demeanor and speaking kindly to Irwig. She then expresses her fondness for their songs, leaving Mandrick intrigued by the little girl's admiration for the music of his band. As Irwig inquires about the identity of a beautiful red-haired woman depicted in the poster, he reveals that she was the one who left him and Bella. Eventually, Mandrick escorts Irwig out of his room and she approaches Bella to offer her apologies for causing trouble. Following this, Irwig assures Bella that she genuinely appreciates their band and the music they create. Upon hearing the kid's sincere words, Bella also forgives her. Over the course of six months, the atmosphere in the house undergoes a remarkable transformation. Irwig receives better treatment than before, as Mandrick and Bella start treating her as their own daughter. They shower her with affection and care and the three of them frequently venture out together, enjoying each other's company. Notably, Irwig also gains the ability to control Mandrick's mischievous demons. On Christmas Eve, Irwig extends an invitation to her old friend, Custard, to visit her house. While Custard is afraid of Mandrick, he musters up the courage to finally arrive at the house, though he remains somewhat nervous. As Irwig opens the door, she is taken aback by the presence of her dear friend Custard, accompanied by the beautiful red-haired woman she saw in the poster. The woman then warmly greets Irwig and extends her heartfelt Christmas greetings. And with this heartwarming encounter, the movie comes to an end. We have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Kindly like, subscribe, and share this video. If you also have thoughts you intend to share, kindly leave them in the comment section. See you in the next video.